Welcome back to Who Chose. Hydroponics doesn't need to look like this or this. Now, to you and me, this is a beautiful sight. Look at all the straight lines and plants growing in liquid. But for some of our partners, this is an atrocity. It's industrial. It's unnatural. So this build is not going to be about saving money so much as it is helping those people that can't do hydroponics because of the aesthetics. I'm going to fix that for you. So today we're going to build an aesthetically pleasing hydroponic herb garden. So some of the things you'll be needing today, you'll need some kind of decent planter bowl. You'll need a drum, a drill, a jigsaw. You'll also need a reciprocating saw or just a hacksaw to cut some of the piping. Uh, we'll be using an AquaPro pump. It's a small pump but it's got a head of 120 centimeters, so it'll be well and truly enough to get the water up uh, into the grow bed. A bulkhead fitting. So this is just a, a tank bulkhead fitting. Uh, you can probably get away with just sticking your pipes through the bottom of your container and siliconing it in, siliconing it in if you like. Uh, but I like to use bulkhead fittings because uh, you can unscrew the parts. Um, so you'll just need various PVC fittings to, depending on the style of bell siphon you're using. And uh, I'll give you a general guideline for bell siphons in the video next to me. Alrighty. So to start with, I'm gonna cut off the lid to the drum so that we can rest our planter bowl in the drum and it gives us easy access so that we can install the bell siphon in the top of the planter bowl. Now that we've cut the top off, we can see if our grow bed fits in there snugly. Looks pretty good to me. So now I'm just going to mark out and cut out an access hole so that you can pump the water out when you need to change the reservoir and access the pump itself. And while it's easy, I'm just going to add in a hinge. So in the bottom of the container that you're using for the top bed, you'll need two holes. You'll need the bell siphon hole, which is an outgoing hole, and the incoming hole, which will be for the 13 millimeter pipe that we're going to be connecting to the water pump. That will just feed into the bottom of the bed and fill it up until such time as the siphon kicks in to drain it. Put an elbow on the end so that when you push it in, uh, it won't slide down through into the bottom reservoir. There's also a couple of cracks in the bowl, so I'm just gonna seal them up just to, make, to be sure it doesn't leak. So now I'm just going to measure up the 90 millimeter shroud and see how long it needs to be to reach the top. Make sure you get a nice straight cut on the pipes because it will give it a lean if you don't. And I'm about to cut my bell siphon bell head into the height that I want. There we go. The standpipe will be about a cap size shorter than the bell. So I'll cut that off there. I have to widen this gap to fit this bulkhead fitting in. This isn't how you're meant to install bulkhead fittings.
Now for the bell cover, I'll just cut out three sections so that the water can get in under the cover and cause the suction in the bell side. Now I'm going to drill holes in the shroud so that I can cut slits between them and it can keep out the growing media whilst also letting the water flow into the bell siphon. There we go. Media cover. It's not winning any beauty awards, but it's hidden by the media. So it just needs to be functional. I can put a lid on that. And now all I have to do is wait for the polyurethane to dry. I'll give the bottom container a spray paint overnight to make it all the same color. And we'll assemble it in the morning. So apologies for the mess. Uh, this part of the house is a bit of a work in progress. Uh, so I'm gonna sand her down with some sandpaper and give her a coat of paint. I've tried to match it to the grow bed. Um, but I actually wouldn't mind a two-tone look, so let's have a look. Now you can place your grow bed wherever you want it. Now we can assemble our bell siphon and fill our bottom container with water. While that's filling, we'll put the pump together. So I've bought a 12 volt low voltage pump, uh, just so that if someone chews the cord, you won't get a large shock. Um, also, it means I can connect it to a solar panel and a battery down the way if I decide to move this into a location with no power. And then it's a self-contained system. Hey. So to connect this up, all we have to do is connect the barb fitting to the piping, like that, and just push it into your pump and turn your pump on full. And then we'll put the pump at the bottom of the reservoir, ready to go. So I've just changed the placement of our bed so that it's closer to one of our power points. Uh, it also means that it gets mostly morning sun, midday sun, and then very little afternoon sun. And before we put media in it, I'll test out that the bell siphon is working properly. To do this, we just turn on the pump and the water should start coming out the inlet. So what should happen here is the water will raise up to the height of the bell and once it cascades over and down there will be no air being sucked into the system and a siphon effect will occur which will drain the whole bed into the reservoir underneath faster than it's refilling. So what happens is the water raises and lowers and raises and lowers. And that delivers the nutrient solution to the plants in a very even manner and allows them to uptake water, nutrients, and oxygen all in very similar ratios. So once you've got your water level adjusted correctly, we can fill it up with media. Now, these have to be washed before you put them in there because in transport they rub together and become all dirty. <laughs> and that's a broken siphon. Pretty cool. Like, I've seen it a hundred times, but it, it never stops being cool. Now we can put on the shroud and fill up the grow bed. <clears throat> Oh yeah, and fun fact about hydrogen, the growing media we're using today, 
it floats. There we go. Now we just need to add in the hydroponic nutrient and plant into it. So the hydroponic nutrient I use is just a two-part granular nutrient with nutrients and trace elements and then calcium. So all we do there is just dip it into the reservoir. There's about 200 litres of water in there and I've put in enough for 200 litres of hydroponic nutrient which will last at least a month. Hello. With the bell removed, the grow media is about two centimetres above the water line, which means that algae won't grow on the top stones. So we'll pop in our bell, pop on the top cap, and she's pretty much ready for planting. So to start with, I'm just gonna pop some strawberries in there, and then later on down the track, I'll let Nick decide whatever she wants to put in here because this is actually designed as Nick's kitchen garden. So she can come out and grab some herbs or whatever she wants without having to go out to the large hydroponic system out the back. And there you have it, a beautiful, functional, hydroponic, ebb and flow, flood and drain bed. If you like this build, subscribe to the channel, like the video, and check out my other videos. I'll see you next time on Who Chose.